This is my favorite corned beef sandwich of all time. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't sound very surprised. No, I mean, oh my god. My favorite corned beef sandwich of all time. Wow. Hey everybody, it's Midnight Weekend. Hi. We are in the basement with a lot of food. Canned fruits, canned vegetables, noodles, all the junk food you would ever want. To one roll of toilet paper. <laughs> we have enough food for a thousand meals, but only enough toilet paper for 25. <laughs> Today, we're going to be eating food made in Michigan. I'm hungry, let's do this. Let's eat. What's more quintessential than a better made potato? What is better made? They are potato chip that's made right here in Detroit. Cool, let's try some. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, okay, all right, okay. Not bad. <laughs> it's like a lace barbecue. Slightly got more spice to it. I think this is saltier than I remember. In 1934, there were over 20 potato chip companies in Detroit. Today, only better made remains. Better made chips <laughs> go perfect with a drink. With Vago Red Pop. Holy cow. Red Pop Vago. What the hell is this monstrosity? Oh, it's strawberry flavored. Mm, that's what they want you to think. Wait Let a minute. What, what? This is naturally caffeine free. Sorry. Why would I want this? No. Why would the kids want this? It smells a little bit like melted candy. That's delicious. You try this. Go jog your memory a little. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Well, hopefully um, Michigan drinks can redeem itself because I got us. Havana's. Verner's was made by a pharmacist called James Verner. So James Verner started selling it in his pharmacy on the corner of Woodward. Let's crack one open. All right, let's do it. Ooh. Cheers. Cheers. It's not bad. I mean, as far as like ginger sodas go, it's like light, sweet, carbonated water, juicy juice. I'm not like a massive soda fan to begin with, yeah. but you know, every now and then you gotta have your high fructose corn syrup with ginger. All right, what's next? Are you ready for your first meal? I think so. Okay, great, close your eyes. Uh-huh. Coney dog. That's a chili dog. We call it a Coney dog, and Coney dogs are served at Coney Islands. What's a Coney Island? It's like Michigan's diners, except they're all Greek themed. All right, I'm just gonna take a bite. Oh, that's a big bite. Mmm. Got a good snap. Chili cheese. Mmm. Raw onions. It's chili dog. How can you go wrong with the chili dog? I feel like it's more popular here because you guys gave it a name. I'm not using our toilet paper. <laughs> oh, you're having a very Michigan moment right now. I am. Hashtag MMs. MMs. <laughs> MMs. Arm spaghetti. <laughs> Legs Coney dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. Next up, we got Detroit style pizza. Mmm. Tell me about Detroit style pizza. What's a big hubbub? We like it. Why? Because there's a ton of corners. Oh, uh, I do like the corners. There's so much crust. Yeah, it gets like the cheesiness and the grease and the crust. Crunchy. It's a nice intersection of all these things. Yeah. And then you get that bite into it and it like juts into your mouth. The reason why Detroit style pizzas are square is because they use the drip pans from cars to bake oh. pizzas. Oh, that's interesting. It's like eating a little piece of history in that car. We're going to pair this Detroit style pizza with some Michigan beers. This one is Bell's Oberon and I'll have the Schwartz Brew in Soft parade. All right, let's do this. Cheers, matey. American wheat ale. How about? Oh, trade seeds. Oh, yours is interesting. It Not starts nutty sweet. and then it ends fruity. We got Buddy's Pizza, the birthplace of the original Detroit style square pizza since 1946. Uh huh. Oh, I see a bit the corner. Mmm. Mmm. That's a legit pizza. Okay, I still don't know what's on this pizza. Black olives, pepperoni, mm -hmm. ground beef. Bacon? Bacon, mm. fresh tomatoes, bell peppers. These corners is what makes the pizza. Good pizza. I like it. 10 out of 10. All right, next up, folks, we got Zimmerman. It's actually a Zingerman's? Next up, folks, we got Z Oh, shoot. Now you got Zimmerman's in my head. You got Zimmerman's in my head. I said Zimmerman's. All right, next up, folks, we got Zingerman's in it. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Zingerman's 
is one of the best pastrami sandwiches I've ever had. It's an institution. Zierman's is one of the reasons I come to Michigan. <laughs> so right here we got one of their famous Reuben sandwiches. Sherman Sherman Sher. I see you have taken a bite of this pickle already. Yeah. I was hungry. This has got to be at least three bites. More like, yeah, okay, three. Hmm. I got the young pickle. I like young pickles. Because they're Pick crunchier. <laughs> so let's put the Russian dressing on. Right, at least good. on my side. It's going to be a mess. Okay, and back goes the cap. Oh my god. Wow. Mmm. Wow. It's so, so much good. Going on. The ratio is so good. It's so moist because of the slaw and the dressing and the fattiness of the meat. And then the bread is nice and soft, but the crust is nice and hard. And I think everything works out just right. What makes this really special is the bread is really tasty too. Like it's got a nice rye flavor. Is it rye bread, Chris? It's rye bread. We have our first audience member and it's my brother. <laughs> I think this is my favorite corned beef sandwich of all time. Wow. Chris, what did you get? Reuben. How's the Reuben? It was great. Another reason to come to Michigan. Poochkeys. Poochkeys <laughs> brought to you by the Tourism Board of Michigan. Donuts. Poonchkeys. How do you spell poonchki? P weird A C Z K I. <laughs> we went to a Polish bakery. Where poonchkeys is year round. They're traditionally filled with prune jam. Ugh. Traditionally eaten during Fat Tuesday, we got, what did we get? Blueberry and Boston cream pie. Let's dig in. So tell me about these things. They are Polish donuts made out of a fattier dough recipe. Oh, it's a dark blueberry filling. Just, just hot. Mm. That's a denser donut for sure. The only thing I wish there was actual blueberry pieces. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had a Boston cream pie. Let's see what this tastes like compared to it. Jello pudding. See, that's the consistency I would expect from a custard, not from a jam. And the jam and the mm. custard taste the exact same. That's to true. Me. They are kind of like the same consistency, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not bad. I'm not saying I would go out in search of a punchy over a regular donut, though. There's really not that much of a difference. You don't have to wait till Fat Tuesday. What's extra in it? The dough has more fat content. Yeah, so just spoon some lard, chase it with some of that, and you got a poonchki in your mouth. Next up, folks, we got pasties. Pasties are an Upper Peninsula tradition. Pasties are individual pies that are filled kind of like a pot pie. They're only half moon shaped. Oh, so it's like a big old dumpling. And the identifying feature of a Cornish pasty is really the pastry and its crimping. Each member of the family has their initials marked in one corner. Okay, so this one has a T and this one has what looks like a P? What are the, what's, what's the difference here? We got a traditional steak pasty, which is sirloin steak, rutabaga. Mm. What's rutabaga? Rutabaga is a root. It's piping hot. Let's try it, I guess. Okay. This one is the traditional, you're supposed to put gravy on it. Ooh, that looks like caramel. All right, let's cut into it. All right. Steam's still coming out. So the cool thing about Ooh. where we bought it from is that it came half baked so that you can bake it back at home. That looks pretty, pretty good. Tasty. I wonder if we're just hungry or not. Uh-oh. Mmm. <laughs> I like it. It's pretty much a pot pie. It's like a hamburger helper sort of taste, at least with the ground chuck sirloin. Mm. The solid ridge of pastry hand crimped along the top of the pasty was so designed that the miner or the traveler could grasp the pasty for eating and then throw the crust away. By doing this, he did not run the risk of germs and contaminations from dirty hands. Out of functionality comes form. This is the original Hot Pocket. What's in a Polish pasty? It's a kielbasa. So it's a meat container inside a meat container. Oh! Juicy! All right, I'm gonna cut into it. Let's do this. Wow, what kind of weird direction was that? What the heck? I guess it's all like steamed in the pocket. We were recommended to eat this Polish pasty with some mustard, so we got some good old yellow mustard. Mustard is good. I didn't get no meat. I'm gonna cook a little bit of it. Oh, it's good. I do like sauerkraut. It adds a little zing. It's kind of like a hearty hot dog with more carbs. Because it's cold up there, guys. Do you feel like a Michigander yet? Almost. When is dessert? I haven't been able to find this ice cream flavor 
anywhere else in the US. It's called Superman ice cream. Superman ice cream is made out of blue moon ice cream, cherry and lemon flavor. Well, let's put this thing together. Oh, it's already uh... perfect. Wow, that color is what the hell. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. I like that. It's beautiful. Wow. And to make things extra flavorful, we're putting <laughs> Dippin' Dots on top of this ice cream. Yes. You what? should try this without it first. Okay, let's do it. It's actually pretty light. Pretty artificial. It's not too bad. How's it with the Dipping Dots? That texture is really interesting. I don't even want to know how much food coloring is going on here. Caramel color, yellow five, yellow six, red 40, blue one. <sighs> I can't even oh, think head. straight anymore. That concludes our Michigan episode. It's interesting to hear all the stories behind all the foods. I feel like I know a little bit more about Michigan, even though Michigan doesn't know a little bit more about me. Sure it does. It does? Oh, it's inside of me now. We made the halo bun. <laughs> Are there foods that you want us to try from your home state? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah, let us know. We'll check you later. Bye. Bye.